Hello, this is John, co-owner of Brainstorm Comics and Gaming in Frederick, Maryland and Walkersville, Maryland. Uh, this is our weekly Storm Watch where we go over the top nine books, three Marvel, three DC, three Independent, that we think you should pay attention to on the happiest day of the week, every new comic Wednesday. Um, if, the, if you don't have a subscription with Brainstorm Comics, well, why not? We offer 20% off on new comics, 20% off on back issues, 20% off on graphic novels, and 10% off on graded books and board games for our subscribers. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in any of these and you don't have a subscription, um, check out our website, brainstormcomics.com, and you can start one there. And don't forget to LCS, like, comment, and subscribe to the Brainstorm Comics YouTube channel. Um, you can click on the logo in the bottom right hand corner uh, and then it will take you to the subscribe uh, section. Uh, and of course we appreciate all of you who have already done that. But let's get started with this week's Stormwatch. So coming in at number three this week for DC is Teen Titans Academy number three. Uh, in this one the solicit reads, don't miss this crossover with Suicide Squad. Hunted by the Deadly Task Force X, the new students of Titans Academy will have to grow up fast or risk losing one of their own even faster. Why has the squad put a target on new speedster Bolt's back? And why, in its charge on Titans Island, is Amanda Waller's team of villains being led by the mysterious Red X? So I did have an opportunity to page through this one. I think that the next issue is going to be pretty big. Um, Red X is very important to those who uh, grew up with the Teen Titans cartoon. He, he was very instrumental in, in their love of it. I think that that character is going to follow a similar tra trajectory to Harley Quinn. Um, started on a, on a cartoon. Uh, people are excited about their introduction to the DCU. Uh, so that one is our number three pick of the week. So let's move on to number two. Stargirl Spring Break Special number one. Uh, the big selling point for this one is the return of Jeff Johns to the character. For those of you who don't know, the character was modeled after his sister who, who passed away. Um, I believe she was in a plane crash and he, he made this one kind of like an homage to her and her memory. Um, the solicit for this one reads, the seven soldiers of Spring Break. Uh, Courtney Whitmore's spring break plans aren't like your average high schoolers. Instead of hanging out with friends, she's heading out on an adventure with her stepfather, Pat Dugan, a.k.a. Stripe, and teaming up with her former team, the Seven Soldiers of Victory. The soldiers are forced to reunite again to unearth the secret Eighth Soldier of Victory. But what other secrets lie buried, and what does it all mean for Courtney's future as Stargirl? Um, so those of you who, who may or may not know, obviously Stargirl has also got a TV show. Um, so this one sounds like it may introduce some new characters. Uh, obviously in comics right now, that's all very important. If you watched uh, this past week's Turning the Page, we, we discussed that. Um, if you haven't watched it, go to our other YouTube channel and do that, or our other YouTube uh, video and watch that. Um, so like I said, this one sounds like a good jumping on point if you uh, want to be... Um, more familiarized with the character. Um, and like I said, it's really going to introduce a new character and deepen the character a little bit more. Hopefully we get to see the new Stargirl series. Um, I was a big fan of this one, of, of the character when she launched and I don't think it was like 97 or 98. So I'm always up for more Stargirl. And that takes us to our number one pick of the week for DC Comics, and that is Milestone Returns, Infinite Edition, uh, Infinite Edition Zero. So. One of my favorite things uh, of the early 90s was the Milestone Universe. I loved pretty much everything that they put out. There were a couple that I wasn't as big on, uh, but it introduced me to Static, introduced me to Icon, introduced me to the Blood Syndicate, um, and also just a lot of great creators. Um, and Icon was very interesting to me. I, I loved that one. But before we get to all that, one of the important things to know about this one is it's all black creators and it really focuses on minority characters, um, which was one of the things that I found interesting when it initially launched. And like I, said, I think it was like 93 that it initially launched. Um, but DC has brought back the characters, brought back a lot of the creators, brought, back in, or brought in some new creators. Uh, so let's go to the solicit for a second. At last is the return of the legendary Milestone Comics. This one-shot features 24 all-new pages chronicling the events of the Big Bang, the police brutality protest gone wrong that changed the face of the city of Dakota forever by unleashing a wave of superpowers across its population. 
As the world watches, a bullied teenager will become the hero known as Static. A frame scientist will, will go on the run as the super weapon hardware, and a stranded alien will meet an ambitious young woman who will transform his life and remake the pair as the all-powerful icon and rocket. Also included is the 17-page primer story originally released online during the world-famous DC FanDome event, further expanding on our heroes' origins and where they're going next, and setting up an entire world of allies, enemies, and surprises. The original milestone changed the face of superhero Hero Comics Forever, introducing the industry to a wave of black talent who still shape the conversation and the new milestone intends to raise the bar. This is the perfect jumping on point. Do not miss out. Um, so, of course, also from that solicit, we can hear some indications that there will probably be some new characters introduced. Um, another reason to pick this up. Um, Icon is very much like a super Superman type character. Uh, Static, if you guys are familiar with the cartoon, that, doesn't need much of an introduction. Uh, he was kind of like the Miles Morales character before there was a Miles Morales. Um, so just a lot of really good things to, to sink your teeth into. Um, definitely one to check out. I would not miss this one if I were you. Um, so that, that is one that should be on the top of your list this Wednesday. And that brings us to our independence this week. So let's start with number three. And again, we have a number three issue for this one, and that is Shadecraft number three. This one has been optioned for a TV show already. Um, more importantly, it's by the writer of um, Skyward, which was an excellent series. And he's also the producer of the Lucifer TV show, which was a, is a fun ride, if you guys have not watched that. Um, but let's read the solicit for this one. Zadie has discovered the source of the shadows and that they can be controlled. Dare she try and wield this incredible power? Hell yes, she dares, and she's damn good at it too. But when someone Zadie cares about ends up in danger because of her, the fun and games become a matter of life or death. Um, this series is really based around the growth of the young character Zadie. She's a teenager, doesn't f quite fit in with the with, in high school. Um, she's considered a weirdo. Um, but much like Skyward, she's growing as the series progresses. Um, and I think that if you're a fan of strong female protagonists that, that see growth as they go along, this is definitely a series for you. The artwork is, is excellent in it. Um, so that is our number three pick of the week, Shadecraft number three. So let's move on to our number two pick of the week, Something is Killing the Children number 16. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this one has also been optioned for a TV show. Um, people are excited about that. People have been putting into uh, snapping up the early ones. The prices on those are skyrocketing. Um, but let's go to solicit, and then we'll come back to why this one made the, the top three. The story you demanded begins here, the origin of Erica Slaughter. What shocking events brought Erica to the House of Slaughter? And what does she have to do to join the Order of St. George? The secrets are revealed here for the first time in this perfect jumping on point for new readers. So in that solicit, you hear the two reasons why it did make our number two pick. Uh, number one, people have been interested in where Erica Slaughter came from. If the TV show does get made, obviously um, her origin is going to be a sought out book. Um, so, that, so, so for people who care about key issues, um, that is what, one of the reasons why it made it. For the readers, um, as you heard in that last sentence, this is a perfect jumping on point for new readers. Uh, we also have the graphic novels in stock. So, and like I said, if you're a subscriber, you get 20% off those as well as the new books. Um, so that is why that has made our number two pick of the week. And that brings us to our number one pick of the week for independence. If you've been watching these series, you know that I love issue number ones. I probably show more, <laughs> give them more attention to, to my time than, than anything else. Um, I love the start of a good story. Unfortunately, my time dictates that I, I don't always have time to keep reading them. Um, but number one this week is Made in Korea number one. So let's read the solicit for that one. A quick start guide for your proxy. Step one, remove box. Step two, power on. Step three, raise your child. For Jesse, the world's first true AI system, growing up means learning to think outside the box. This exciting new six issue miniseries will, re will redefine what it means to be a family in an age when biological parenthood is no longer a reality. 
So this one has a lot of that sci-fi elements that I'm interested in. Um, it sounds like it, it, it's kind of like in that um, vein of, of AI, the movie. Um, it also, like, so fans of The Sender may want to check this one out. It is a mini-series, um, but it sounds very interesting. I think that this one has the opportunity to be um, one that people read for a while. Um, it sounds like it's uh, definitely got the hallmark of, of, uh, of a great story. Um, so that's our number one pick of the week for Independence. And let's move on to our top three Marvel books. And I did a little bit of cheating on this one. It's actually gonna be two different titles, but they tie together. Um, they are Star Wars Darth Vader number 12 and Dr. Aphra number 10. And the reason that I paired these together is because they're both part of the War of the Bounty Hunter storyline. Um, so let's read the Darth Vader solicit and then we'll read the Dr. Aphra one. Um, for Darth Vader, Returned to the fold after his rebellion against the Emperor, Darth Vader faces the horrors of reconstruction in the secret lab laboratories of Coruscant. As he blacks out under the knife, does he still dream of revenge against his master, or do his thoughts drift towards his son and the friends who make Luke Skywalker so vulnerable? Don't miss this next critical new chapter in Vader's ongoing evolution, featuring the revelation of the first time the Dark Lord learned the name Han Solo. So moving on to Dr. Aphra number 10, the solicit reads, Dr. Aphra and Sano Staros find themselves cornered by Veruca and the Unbroken Clan. Can they pull off a daring escape, even if that means surrendering to the Nile hyperdrive? And what sets them on a collision course with one of the most deadly bounty hunters in the galaxy? Um, so War of the Bounty Hunters is going to be an epic storyline, again, Chandler and I covered the size of this. It's 34 parts over on Turning the Page. You can hear our discussion there. Um, so I've been talking to the Star Wars fans out there who have, who have been reading the prelude things, and they said that the story's been very engrossing so far. Uh, more importantly, I think that there's gonna be a lot of new characters introduced to this one. I think we're gonna see a lot of um, expansion of the roles of, of these characters as well. Um, Obviously, with the Bounty Hunters TV show on Disney+, Plus, that's becoming, um, the, the first appearance of Bounty Hunters is becoming very sought after by, by Star Wars collectors and comic book collectors. Um, so that's why this one made our number three pick of the week for Marvel. So that brings us to our number two pick for Marvel, and that is Black Panther number 25. Um, one of the key reasons that this is on the, the top three picks for Marvel is Ta-Nehisi Coates is concluding his run on the character. He's been on there for, I want to say six years at this point. I want to say he started in 2015. Um, so obviously he's going to have something big happen to pay off everything that he's been building up over these years. Um, I'm sure that we'll see him set up the world for the next writer as well. Uh, but let's turn to the solicit and see what it has to say. The final issue of Ta-Nehisi Coates' landmark, landmark run is the end of an era for the Black Panther as renowned writer Ta-Nehisi Coates concludes his Wakandan epic. Over five years, Coates has taken the Black Panther to hell and back and expanded Wakanda into the distant stars. Now, in his final issue, he brings T'Challa full circle back to the home he left behind and the crown he has never fully accepted. This is the story of a king who sought to be a hero, a hero who was reduced to a slave, a slave who advanced into legend, and the man who has struggled to hold up an empire in his bare hands. The journey will conclude, but the legend remains. Don't miss the close of a historic epoch in, hi in comic history, including an epilogue drawn by Brian Stelfreeze. Um, so like I said, you know, he's been on the, on the character for half a decade at this point. Um, we've, we've definitely seen the character change over those five years. I think we're gonna see some really, something really big happen in this one. More, more importantly for, for me, at least from looking at the covers without knowing the interior of the story, um, there are some very awesome covers for this one. Um, I want to say there's like five or six that are going to knock people's socks off. Um, uh, maybe we'll rotate through some of them at the end of this video and let you see what they are. So that brings us to our number one pick for Marvel this week. Um, there are a couple of Heroes Reborn um, number ones out this week. Uh, the one that we chose for number one, however, was Heroes Reborn Young Squadron number one. Um, 
one of the biggest things in Marvel right now are their young heroes, and this one centers around them and a new take on them. Um, the Heroes Reborn, in case you don't know, is as if the Avengers were never assembled. Um, the Squadron Supreme uh, took their place instead. And so the Marvel Universe has been reshaped in that image. And so let's read the solicit for this one. The Squadron Supreme of America have taken root in the hearts and minds of all, but none more so than the trio of youthful champions who call themselves the Young Squadron. Quid Kid Spectrum, Sam Alexander, Girl Power, Kamala Khan, and the all-new Falcon, Miles Morales, are here to fight for true, true justice and the American flag. Or are they? Beneath the flashy facade of colorful adventure, something grim is stirring, and Deadpool is determined to bring it to light. So, as you can see, we have two of the more popular characters in the Marvel Universe. We have Kamala Khan, and we have Miles Morales leading up this one. Um, Sam Alexander is, is growing in popularity. He hasn't quite reached the same level as the other two, however. Um, so if you've been enjoying the Heroes Reborn series, um, this is one that I think you should check out. Even if it's not one that you've been reading, uh, if you're a fan of those characters, I think this might be one for you to, to read as well. Um, I honestly think that there will be at least one or two new characters that come out of this um, that are, are introduced into the, into the mainstream Marvel Universe after this whole miniseries is done, this little side event is done. Uh, we will see. Obviously, I don't have any inside information on that, but I do think that that's what we will probably see. Um, so that concludes this week's The Storm Watch. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed um, the picks. Hopefully you saw something or heard something that you want to pick up. Um, just a reminder to please LCS, like, comment, and subscribe to the Brainstorm Comics and Gaming YouTube channel. Um, and thank you for watching. Have a happy Wednesday.